Welcome back to the channel. As you hopefully already know, with the full release of update 1.0 in Coral Island, our farms will be completely reset. And if you didn't know that until right now, then I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you, but yes, your relationships, your farm, your tools, etc., are being reset and you'll start from the very, very beginning. The good news though, is that you'll actually will have the option to start with all the money you've earned throughout your current playthrough. And to clarify, that's not the money you have got in your hand, it's actually the money you've earned that's listed in your journal. And in this video, I'm going to show you the best way to get started in 1.0 so you can get your farm back on track. And before we get into everything, please do not forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of this great Coral Island content. Now getting started, I'll be talking about things in order based on what I think the priority should be. These aren't necessarily going to be the order in that you gain access to these, so just keep that in mind. Obviously at this point we know that completing offerings is extremely important, so you'll want to get all the appropriate crops planted on your farm ASAP. Now I recommend loading up on crops as well and have multiple pots going because you really want to level up your farming to level 2 as quickly as possible since you'll unlock the sprinkler at this level. Until then you'll be doing a lot of watering which means you'll be depleting a lot of your stamina each day. And I highly recommend loading up on either bread or sugar from Sam's store to eat to recover your stamina or even coffee from Raj's. Just be careful though because coffee will actually deplete your health. And you can always go out and hang out in the hot springs for free stamina recovery, but I just find it takes so long and we're going to want to better utilize our time. Now another farming tip, I go ahead and leave the space in the middle of my 3x3 farms so that whenever I unlock the sprinklers I can just toss them in the center without having to, to destroy any crops. And while you're in Sam's buying crops, you definitely want to buy the backpack upgrades. If you carried over a lot of money, then I recommend just going ahead and maxing out because it'll only cost you 16k. Now the next thing that I want you to prioritize is going ahead and getting the barn and coops both built and stuff them with at least two animals each, so two chickens and two cows. Animal products are hands down the best way to passively make money, so it's definitely good to go ahead and get your animals leveled up. And if you can afford it, honestly just go ahead and max out both your barn and your coops of four cows, four chickens. You can always upgrade it later to hold higher tier animals or build additional animal buildings as you level up your town. Now while unfortunately this is the higher priority to get done, you won't be able to do this as both the barn and coop require not only higher amounts of wood and stone but also five bronze each, which you cannot make without a furnace. And if you're like me, you may have forgotten that the cavern only opens on day five of starting out a new save, so you have to wait a couple of days until you can unlock these. That's okay though because we can focus on other things up until that point. That said, when it turns day 5, you'll want to immediately go to the caverns and mine at least a single bronze ore because that's how you get the furnace recipe. Now from this point, I recommend buying all the ore you need to turn into 10 bars to build both coop and barn. Now going back to before you've unlocked the cavern at day 5, after you've tended to your crops and hopefully recovered some of your spent stamina, you'll want to put your sights on diving as much as you can, since you really won't have much else to do aside from cleaning your farm and speaking to villagers. You ideally want to gather as much bronze kelp as you can, because you'll need a lot of bronze and silver kelp to craft sprinklers once they're unlocked. As always, you can certainly just buy kelp as you go along if you're rich already, but clearing trash and cleaning the reefs is actually a great way to level up your town and get a lot of trash which can be turned to scrap. Now eventually, like I said, on day 5 you'll unlock the cavern and gain access to a furnace. After building your coop and barn, you'll want to continue to buy bronze and coal from the blacksmith and shove it into your furnace. At this point, you'll want to start upgrading all of your tools to bronze tier, starting with either your scythe or pickaxe. All in to buy bronze ore and coal to upgrade your tools, it'll only cost you about 22,000, which really isn't a lot, which is why I suggest doing it as soon as possible. And honestly, it'll be a bit more than 22k, but if you want, you can even upgrade your tools to silver or even gold quality by buying ore from the blacksmith, assuming you have the extra money. It'll definitely make diving and the mines go by quicker, so it might be something to think about. Now, speaking of upgrading your tools, I also highly recommend buying the higher tier upgrades for your fishing rod and bug net once you've unlocked them to make catching some of the more rare fishing insects much easier. Since we've covered some of the main things, let's talk about some things that you probably should be doing sort of at the same time while you're doing all the other more, you know, main things that I mentioned before. Probably the thing that I forget most about checking is the black market at the lookout every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 2000 to 2200. Starting a new save with a lot of money, utilizing the black market to buy donatable items is a great way to start building your museum back up, so absolutely take advantage of that. The other thing I want to make sure you do is always, always, always have your net equipped as you run around town to catch any bugs that you might see. That may seem obvious, but it's a great way to get some of the offerable and donatable insects. Given that the 1.0 adds the marriage system, it's also probably a good idea to start gifting some of the locals while you're running around town. 
Personally, I like to pick out a few of the locals and make sure to gift them something that's super easy to get like forageables. Just pay attention, you don't give someone something that they hate, like trash, because believe it or not, people hate being gifted trash. Weird, right? The last thing that I highly recommend getting ASAP is your recycling machine, which turns trash to scrap. It's unlocked at diving level 2, which you should get fairly quickly, but you'll want to constantly make sure you've got trash in the recycling machine. Now, I know that that probably seems like a lot of things to do, but remember, this is a cozy farming sim, so don't feel like you have to perfectly optimize your time with the new update. That said, it's just some things to keep in mind as you're playing to help get your farm back to where it was before the big wipe. And I hope this video was helpful, and if you have anything to add, please drop it in the comment section below so we can all help each other out. And as always, YouTube, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.